Welcome to Reread. We're on book three of the Dark Forces trilogy. It is called Jedi Knight. I'm assuming this takes place right after Rebel Agent, but then we have another problem here with the timeline because Luke introduces Leia and Han again to Kyle because Kyle's already met them. He may not have met Han, but he's met Leia before. And he introduces them as Han and Leia solo. So they've already been married. So Rebel Agent says this is five years away, which should place it just barely after or before Jedi. And you got to go two more years before Luke, uh, uh, Han and Leia get married. So was there a time jump? There doesn't, it doesn't say how much time has passed, but I mean, Jared is traveling to Rusan to get the, you know, to get the to get to the valley, and so is Kyle. So I don't think that much time has passed. So again, you have a little bit of. I mean, obviously this was written very early in the days, and Bill Dietz probably didn't realize that he thought that oh well, Han and Leia got married right after Jedi. Yeah, but it wasn't right right after. Either way, though, uh, that's just a little bit of a time um, contradiction or t time issue, I should say, with the continuity here on where to put these. I th I've got to put these past courtship of Princess Leia now, since they're both married. Either way, uh, Jarek goes to this, uh, it's called Fort Nowhere on Rusan. It was mentioned in the Rebel Agent book, but now he sends some of his agents to go down there, question the people, question the locals, and then eventually wipes them, sends the invasion force back to wipe them out, uh, just because he's evil. And Jarek's, Jarek has done really well in this book. He has nothing in his office. Nothing that, you know, no, no lights, no, no pictures. He's blind, of course. He has some gemstones that have different colors and feels to them. Some are hot, some are cool, some are smooth, some are rough. And that's just for touch. He listens to music a lot. He, so the other, and, and he, he breaks open capsules and smells different things. So his other senses he enjoys, but sight is not one of them, which is why his room is mainly bare. And he only, he only keeps with the bare minimum. I like Jarek as a villain. As a villain, he works really well and he looks awesome. Dave, Dave Dorman's art, I haven't been mentioning this, Dave Dorman's art is 100% beautiful. I mean, you pause on each page and just, just oogle up. Each, each, each uh, splash page of art, it's just so good. Anyway, uh, Jan and Kyle go to Rusan. Uh, this is where you're going to see bouncers again. It's, uh, if you're reading this in chronological order, then everything starts looking familiar. Except, and this is what I like, as I guess Kyle is seeing these visions as he gets closer to the Valley of the Jedi, of, you know, Lord Hoth and the Army of Light, you know, and then Khan, you know, and the uh, Brotherhood of Darkness. And he's kind of seeing the whole battle take place and how they developed a thought, thought bomb which wiped everyone out. And they thought they were going to be free, but the thought bomb sucked all their souls into... Uh, the sphere, whatever the uh, Sith concocted there. So he kind of gets a better idea of what's going on. And that's nice, because before then, if you're reading this in chronological order, we only got it from Darth Bane's perspective. But here we get a lot of Lord Hoth's perspective. I mean, Khan is in a little, little ways, and one of the most silliest ones is in the flashback, he gives the motto, or the war cry, Khan rules! And they go, Khan rules! Oh. All the Sith go, Khan rules! Yeah! I'm not sure that's not what uh, Bill wanted, but that's definitely how I read it. Khan rules! Yeah, you know Khan rules. But uh, anyway, uh, a lot of things um, the Empire now owns looks beat up in a, lot of, in, in a lot of the pictures that Dave Dorman draws, and that makes sense because supplies are in short... Uh, short uh, everything is in short supply. In fact, how... Kyle and Jan infiltrate, you know, and get through the, the Jarek's Empire's ships is to pretend to be a, a group carrying some missiles, from pro, extra proton missiles, and they got the shipment mixed up. They're not supposed to be there. They're not on the platform. It's like, oh, wait, y'all aren't the right. Oh, we have all these proton torpedoes. Sorry, y'all aren't the right one. Well, they know that they don't have clearance. They're not on the schedule. But if they act like they have a delivery and they deliver it to the wrong place, they know the Empire is greedy and they'll take whatever they can get. That's a smart move, and Bill Dietz thought about this, and no one else has thought about that. Like, Rogue Squadron should have done that <laughs> at one point, I think. But what a smart idea to say, yeah, everyone's you know hurting for supplies because the Empire's reeling from loss after loss here. They're on the losing side, so they want... And weapons, they will always take weapons if there's extra weapons, so that a shipment gets misdirected to them. They're not going to let that ship go. They're going to take those weapons. Now, the proton torpedoes 
are all fat, you know, they're all faulty, so they all blow up in the chamber. But of course, the Empire doesn't know that. But I thought that was really interesting. Anyway, uh, Kyle has to fight all the all the last Jedi here. He has to fight Maul, who only has half of his body. He's kind of holding himself up by the force. He's this big brute of a guy with all upper body strength. <laughs> uh, and as he beats him, then he bites. Uh, he fights Ceres. Ceres was mentioned in the uh, previous book, but isn't that big in Rebel Agent. She has a much bigger role in Jedi Knight. And so he battles Ceres and, of course, defeats her. And then he fights Bok, who was mentioned a little bit in Rebel Agent. He's here and there, but he takes on a bigger role now. He's a Twi'lek with double-bladed lightsabers. By the way, Kakatarn's lightsaber is yellow. I just never noticed that. At least it's portrayed as yellow in these books. So I just never noticed that. And I don't think they mention, I don't think Bill Dietz mentions what color his lightsaber is. But either way, though, I just found that interesting. Uh, at the very end, Jarek is there trying to call on the power of the Valley of the Jedi. And so Kyle's like, I must kill him. But then Kyle realizes that's not the way. That's the way of the, the dark Jedi. So what he does is he wraps him up in the light so that it, he will, that it will block out all the dark you know, force energy going to Jarek. And then he defeats him that way. And as Jarek's laying defeated, he says, strike me down, I killed your father. Kind of reveals to Kyle, it was me who killed your father, because he just wants Kyle to turn to the dark side. Kyle decides not to, throws his lightsaber back at Jarek and goes, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to kill you. Of course, Jarek is going to pick up the lightsaber, try to take a cheap shot at Kyle. Kyle will defeat him and kill him anyway. And then he and Jan are together forever, I guess. It's kind of how it ends there. And, oh, Kyle frees, of course, all the Jedi uh, from the valley, uh, who are trapped by the thought bomb. And he fulfills a prophecy which was talked about in Rebel Agent and only three or four times in this book, too. Overall, the books are great. The books are really good. For someone who didn't read the or didn't play the video games, I really enjoy the books. They're easy reads, plus, uh, I, they don't feel like you're plotting through a video game. Yes, at the very end, when he has to battle one person after the next, you know that's part of the video game, but it doesn't feel ham-fisted. The writing is done really well. William Dietz, gr great author. They should have given him another shot. Oh, wait, they did. Escape from Dagoo. Someday, hopefully, I'll read that. But for right now, from what we got from Mr. Dietz, it's great stuff. So, unfortunately, these are very hard to find. So, I don't know if digital copies are out there or whatnot, but uh, it'd be great to get your hands on one, especially if you love Kyle Katarn. So, what a missed opportunity we didn't get to see more Kyle Katarn, because I can see why he'd be a lot of people's favorite. All right, folks, that's it for now. See you next time.